Amikor nagykövet úr elfogadta meghívásunkat, akkor felmerült, hogy mikor szóljon, azt ajánlottam neki, hogy utolsóként, amikor már itthon érzi majd magát, remélem ez a folyamat befejeződött, és mondható, hogy itthon érzi magát a közösség tagjának. Azt is elmondom, hogy amikor egy kicsit személyesebben megismertem, megkérdeztem tőle e, valahol, hogy e, ismeri -e az egyik definíciót Európáról, mely szerint Európa nem más, mint valami Nagy-Britannia és Magyarország között. Nagyon jó és profi diplomataként azt mondta, hogy nem rossz, csak mit szólnak a román, bulgár, stb. testvéreink. Hát mondom, akkor vegyük úgy, hogy ez még akkor élt, amikor ő, mielőtt még ők csatlakoztak volna. Köszönjük szépen, hogy itt van köztünk nagykövet úr, és megkérem, hogy mondja el szavait. Mr. Barlog, Bishop uh, Kishrigo, Your Excellencies, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Minister Ur, Kiboros Ur, Kedves Vendégek, Hölgyeim és Uraim. Először, um, bocsánat kell kérnem, um, mert csak angolul fogok um, mondani jó beszélemet, um, ami könnyebb nekem, és szerintem valószínűleg Önöknek is. And secondly, um, uh, Bishop, if I may, um, uh, let me thank you for the invitation, but also for making me feel so relaxed and at home. And to show how protocol mentes um, <laughs> I feel, um, I'm inspired by the rector to try to tell a joke. <laughs> now, please be generous because jokes don't normally translate very well. A mother takes her small son to the Natural History Museum. And she takes him to the hall where they show the skeletons of the dinosaurs. And the little boy asks um, the museum employee, how old is that skeleton? And the employee says, that skeleton is one million, one and a half years old. <laughs> And the child's mother says, that's very precise. Are you sure? And the employee says, oh yes, absolutely sure. When I arrived at this museum, I was told it was one million years old. <laughs> and I've been working here for one and a half years. <laughs> I feel I may, may have strayed away from the subject um, in hand. To get back, though, to um, values and Europe. Britain, the UK, is a country 
that's built on Christianity. The Bible is crucial to British values. But we're a diverse nation. Perhaps the most, one of the most diverse nations in the world. Many British people have different faiths. Many have no religion at all. We feel that that makes the UK stronger and also gives us strong values. And because of this, when we come to Europe, its identity and its future, we come with a very practical frame of mind. For us, the idea of Europe, the idea of the European Union, is a means to an end. It's a way to achieve prosperity, stability, the anchor of freedom and democracy within Europe and beyond. And of course, the first purpose of the European Union, together with NATO, was to ensure peace on our continent. But today, its main purpose, the main challenge for Europe, is no longer peace, but is prosperity. And we in Britain have a very clear vision for a 21st century Europe and European identity. I should there of course say that there are many opinions in the UK just as the country is diverse. Um, these though are the opinions um, of, uh, of the government at the moment. But essentially, um, and I'm simplifying this a little bit, but essentially there are four principles which we see for Europe and its future identity. The first is around competitiveness. It's about encouraging prosperity within Europe. It's about guaranteeing prosperity for the people of Europe. And doing that by minimizing um, regulation, by maximizing transparency. Transparency. Um, and by trading with as many people outside Europe as we can. The second principle would be respect. Respect and tolerance, in fact. 
Not all countries, not all people want exactly the same thing. That needs to be respected within the EU and within Europe. For example, there should be levels of integration within the European Union um, that are permitted. There is not, there should not be just one answer for each country. So flexibility should be a key value for Europe and its identity. Third is fairness. No solution to one country's, one community's problems should be at the expense of another's. And fourth, a topic we haven't touched on very much so far, is the one of democracy. And in particular, democratic accountability. The people of Europe must be as close to power as they can be. The people must be in control. The people that they vote for must be in control. So those then are the four principles, if you like, um, which come to mind when we think about uh, the future of Europe um, and the essence of Europe. Prosperity, respect, fairness and democracy. And we're concerned about them. We feel that Europe, if it continues along the road it has in the last several years, won't respect, will not respect those principles. Our people will not become more prosperous. The union, the union will not get closer to its citizens. And we think that that needs a very fundamental far-reaching review. We believe in a flexible Europe, a flexible European Union. We believe in a Europe that represents and promotes the values of European civilization throughout the world. We believe in a Europe that advances our shared interests by using our collective influence around the world. And we believe in a Europe with a strong, prosperous economic base for all of its citizens.
At the beginning of my brief words, I made a distinction between British values and Christian values. Christian. Um, but when you, when I think about the values I've just talked about, though, as a Christian, they seem very close to Christian values, but arrived at in a different way. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your attention. Köszönöm a figyelmüket, köszönöm a türelmüket.